worldwide and, and download your own copy. Uh, you can buy it at finer bookstores on, everywhere online, but um, I recommend that you get the free copy from Webster'sDictionary.com uh, because it's free and it has its, its better illustration. My name is Ralph Benko. I'm here from Washington, D.C. Thank you all very much for having me with you here. Um, I, come, I come at the web from, a, from a, a, a very different place, and that is from the very bottom up. I spent two years analyzing why the very big, powerful groups became that way groups like MoveOn.org. And, I, and then I, I wrote it up in this book to say anybody can do this. MoveOn.org was started by a husband and wife team at home in seven days. Wes, uh, Wes, uh, Wes and Joe, uh, uh, Joan Blades and Wes Boyd. They, were, they started in 1998 because they were very unhappy with the Clinton impeachment. They were not just unhappy with the Clinton impeachment, they were unhappy that the Democrats were not rushing, that no Democrats were rushing to Bill Clinton's aid. <coughs> and so they put, uh, put together a little online petition saying, censure Clinton and move on. You have more important things to do with our time. They got 500,000 people signing their little petition, sending it to their friends, coming and signing it, and they had 500,000 email addresses. A few years later, a young man, maybe 19 years old, named Eli Pariser, wanted a, America to conduct a, a pacifistic response to 9-11, not to invade Iraq, not to react violently. So he created a petition called 9-11, which he started in his bedroom in a day or two, 911peace.org, and he sent it to 30 friends, and in the next week or two, he got 500,000 people signing his petition. That simple. Now there is an art to it that, and not a science to it. And that's what I got curious about. Then Wes and Joan and Eli came together, merged their lists, and created a list of a million people that, that, that is moveon.org, which has now grown to five million people. And it has a staff, I think, of 16. And they're now creating field staff. But this is very, what I call, humanitarian populism, where very few people tuning in to what's really, really important to millions of others can create a voice for millions of people who have had no voice in the past, who do not feel represented by their elected <laughs> officials, and who are not really represented by their elected officials. I call this the Republican Revolution, and I use a small r Republican this being the Republic of France, where our elected officials are to be guided by the people. The people designate officials to be their representatives and to, and to carry out their will in the councils of state. Now, I don't know how it is here in France. I assume that you are magnificently governed because your food is so good and, you're, you're, you, and you are also so on all of you. Okay. You can repeat after me or not, but I am imposing it. I will use my powers only for good. Congratulations, you're now all members of the Noble Order of Websters. And if we catch you misusing this power, we will evict you from the, from the Noble Order. You wouldn't want that. Okay. There's one word that is compelling. All of the widgets and watchets and PHPs and that, all important, okay? But what will make anybody powerful immensely powerful is a narrative. Napoleon said, imagination rules the world. We all live inside of a story. There are four methods of communication that have been found since classical times. And if anybody here finds a fifth one, you can become as famous as Aristotle. Okay? But up till now, there's only been four. There is description. There is exposition. There is argumentation, and there is narration. Policy wonks like me love argumentation, okay? And we kind of like description a lot, an exposition where we explain what we've just described. But the thing that compels human beings, the thing that gives meaning, power, and motivation to us is not data, it's not education, it's not information, it's not teaching, it's a story a story that we can believe in, and a story that we can live inside. So, we have 
the, the classic good guy, bad guy, moral order, high conflict, and invitation to participate. Or you can have the asteroid is hurtling toward the Earth, and we all must make a heroic effort. This is the global warming narrative in order so that our children don't die or live in squalor. Both of them are dramatic, and both of them make demands on the listeners to participate. The wonderful thing about the web is it is totally egalitarian. Social network Republican revolution where citizens are reasserting their power. And it began on the left, on the center left, with Move On. They are our kind of spiritual guide. It is now beginning to emerge on the center right with the Tea Parties who are just learning their ways around. Both are imperfect, but perfection is not called for because except for in the case of the French, perfection is an unknown quantity in, a, in, in the rest of the world. So we will muddle by as best we can. Now, I, I, wrote, uh, I wrote 12 laws 